Hey everyone, it's Virginia Schmidt, and I'm so glad that you are meeting me here at Divinity Ranch. Today, tonight rather, I wanted to talk a little bit about grace. This is the word that is coming to mind tonight for me, and I think I'm going to name this video something along the lines of having a little grace. A little grace for ourselves, a little grace for others. Hmm. Grace. Just feel into that word. Feel into that state. Oh, look, lady's gonna join us. I think that's a good sign. <laughs> She's feeling into grace. Yeah, and there goes Rosie up onto the bed. So I was just looking up definite definitions of grace before I started this video and one of them that I really liked was a state of sanctification achieved through divine assistance and the word to, to sanctify or sanctification means to make holy so the idea of bringing grace to a situation is to be able to make it holy to see it for what it is, honestly, right? Because every situation is holy. Everything is holy now. One of my favorite songs introduced to me by my Uncle Jimmy earlier this year when I was in Tennessee, and this won't be the first time you'll see me putting a link to that song, and I'll go ahead and put a link down in the About section below. <sighs> so... To bring grace to any situation is to be able to see it for the holiness that it is. And I don't know if you guys can relate to this at all. You know, I feel like I've been so much on this self-improvement path, world improvement path, you know, bringing everything, bringing all of the unconscious into the conscious, all of the darkness into the light showing everything for what it is, saying everything for what it is, which can be really beautiful, right? Because hopefully part of that also is to realize that everything in its fullness is perfectly holy, perfectly sanctified. And ideally you would be doing that through grace too. It's just, I think for me, I have been getting caught up in judgment instead with that. And the darkness that comes with seeing things when you, how about this? When you see things for what they are, but you're lacking the grace. When you're seeing something clearly and you don't have that grace, then it's unholy. And things can start to seem really dark and really heavy. And I have definitely been, you know, going through going through some dark times and going through some depressive times and some difficult times. I'm, you know, unearthing a lot of family stuff, a lot of generational trauma, a lot of trauma within my life. Um, and that can be something really, really beautiful and really, really holy. And only so if you bring grace to it. And so I just wanted to say, like, let's have a little grace, you know? Like, what's this all about? Why? Why bring everything? Why see everything for what it is? Why bring everything in the darkness to the light if it's not going to be to see it for what it truly is, which is holy? If we're not going to have a little grace, you know? Why? Why be in all of these relationships and be calling ourselves out and all the people who we're in relationship with out for, you know, big things that a lot of us are becoming conscious of that are super important, like narcissism, like gaslighting, like codependency, like addiction issues, things like this. But why? Why bring them all up and why... 
why go through it if it's just going to make our lives darker and heavier? And I do think that it can be part of the process. Like I'm absolutely sure that a lot of the darkness and heaviness that has gone on in my life, especially in just the past couple of weeks is leading me to this video where I'm saying, hey, let's have a little grace. Let's have a little grace and realize that this really is, you know, that everyone is honestly trying their best. We're all doing the best we can in whatever relative situation we're in. And so I think that that grace is really necessary, especially as we kind of unearth like, wow, I thought I was doing my best. And then I realized that, you know, I was being really narcissistic or I was being really unforgiving or someone else, it turns out, is, you know, was being really untrustworthy or et cetera, et cetera. And again, of course, we all know here that everyone who's in our lives and our perspective of everyone who's in our lives is really just a projection of that which is inside of us. And so in the end, whether we have grace towards others or grace towards ourselves, it's all the same thing. It's all the same thing because really it's grace towards the one awareness that is. You know, I, uh, I just want to encourage you to just activate the word grace in your day and maybe realizing that just coming back to A Course in Miracles, honestly, right? Because every unloving thing is really just a call for love. And without grace, we just can't help but judge things. And that just makes it like, I guess that's what I'm saying. There's no point in bringing it to the light if you're just going to judge it. Because honestly, to judge is to just cast darkness back on things. That heaviness and that darkness. And grace is what allows us to love everything for exactly what it is by making it holy. And all we have to do is give things that chance. I've been going through a lot of, you know, what really inspired me to make this video tonight, I've been going through a lot of stuff with my parents and it's, it's deep stuff. It's heavy stuff. It's, it's the kind of stuff that makes you feel, you know, trapped and hopeless and just so dark and, and so despairing and so despondent. And it did come from just some very open saying it how it was, communicating some things that have never been communicated before, conversations that I had with my mom yesterday, you know, um, just frankly talking about, hey, I want us to be able to say what we mean. I need us to be able to trust each other to say what we mean and, and to communicate what we need and trust that it's also okay to say no, you know. If someone asks you to do something and in say, instead of saying yes and then later being resentful about it, being able to say what you mean and say no. And, and we had a lot of amazing conversations. So all of that's very important. And I think in a lot of ways during that conversation, I honestly didn't have very much grace. Um, you know, it, it can be hard to have grace when we've repressed a lot of things and then it comes out in this sort of violent eruptive torrent stop me if you know what I mean <laughs> that's ever happened to you before um and so all of those things are important and I want to talk more about those things I am really passionate right now about this idea of being able to truly say what we mean so that we can trust like that that's what we're teaching people in our lives and showing people that they can trust that what we say is what we mean it's not to be taken personally. You know, that's kind of against everything, I don't know about you, but that I was brought up with and kind of against American culture where instead we just say whatever we think will please the other person and then we actually, like, you know, unconsciously for sure understand that we can't actually trust what people mean. And... I think that that is a really important point. And yet tonight, what I wanted to talk to you guys about was grace because all of this stuff has been coming out with my family. Having that conversation with my mom allowed for me to have a conversation with my parents tonight where 
we started talking about family history and where, you know, I was just able to have a little bit of grace for my parents and more and more grace the more I learned because these generational traumas that we all carry with us they weren't that long ago, you know, like World War II wasn't very long ago. And obviously with, you know, I mean, slavery was not that long ago. Um, you know, the total annihilation of Native Americans was not that long ago. The Holocaust was not that long ago. So many very significant and traumatic events, whether in our personal lives or, you know, our collective global national cultural lives, were just not very long ago. And that does get stored in us as generational trauma. And, you know, I think that a lot of what we call instinct is basically just generational memory, that genetic memory that we carry in us that gets activated. And so I think that history actually, like having a larger perspective on things, whether it's one person's life or the history of a nation or, or a people, I think that it's really important actually in this idea of grace because through having this conversation with my parents, it just became easier and easier to have a lot of great, not even just a little bit, a lot of grace, a lot of grace as I realized like, wow, like this is how you guys grew up and this is how your parents grew up and this is how their parents grew up. And it makes it a lot easier to sanctify, to make holy, to forgive, to redeem with again, divine, divine assistance, right? Love, the heart. These things that seem so dark and so unacceptable and so easy to judge, right? And of course, we're bringing it all in the light in the name of healing. But without that grace, which a lot of which, again, I think can come from perspective, we don't end up healing, we end up judging. And so maybe we can all be practicing together, bringing a little bit of grace to the situations that most seem to be, well, you know, that we feel shittiest about basically, because that's another way of saying that we're judging it, right? Um, by getting some more perspective, some larger, broader, higher, you know, further back, whatever you want to call it, perspective. And so I encourage you, whether it's, again, with a person, with a country, with, you know, whatever it is in your life, maybe learning a little bit more about it, just being open to that, being open to learning more so that you can have a little bit of grace. Because when I understand more about the kind of very rough, very violent, very tragic, very difficult lives that even my grandparents lived, it's hard not to have a lot more grace for my parents who have certainly come a long way since then and then to have a lot more grace for myself who, you know, is that next generation on. And so I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts about grace and ways that you guys are activating, bringing some grace in your life, finding finding forgiveness instead of judgment. And, you know, I think grace is that, is that magic, that magic element. I mean, how can we judge something that we're truly seeing as holy? But when we can't see the holiness in it, and we, when we feel like it has to look this certain way in order to be holy, we've really missed the whole point. We've really missed the whole point. We're continuing to say, that that person or that thing, again, and in all reality, since our world and our since our world is our mirror, that aspect of ourselves is not worth loving. Is not holy. Instead, is profane. And so, you know, I think this is important to whatever side of the spectrum you're on. 
you know, in at least in the United States and in the world with, for instance, the, per, the current political climate, it's really easy to judge the other side. It's really, really easy to judge people and think, well, how? Uh -oh. No dogs. Peter, 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 no barking. Peter, no barking. Someone's pulling up. So I apologize for that barking because I'm not gonna edit this video. So Peter, come here, bud. Come on, come over here. Come over here. They're my protector dogs. Someone just pulled up, so they're very diligent about protecting me. And having a little grace for that, right? It's easy to get mad at our dogs for barking. And then in the larger perspective of this is how they protect their pack, then it's kind of holy and beautiful that they would bark like that. And I, I do apologize if it hurt your ears because like I said, I'm not gonna edit this video. I'm just gonna post it as is. So, so yeah, in the current political climate, I think is just one example of a place where we can have a little bit and a lot of grace and just being willing to learn more about where people are coming from to have those beliefs that they have. You know, just one more like very um, specific example when it comes to my family, like I, you know, guns are a big part of the heritage of my family to the point that my, my grandparents, you know, traveled the country buying and selling antiques. And a lot of those were like beautiful antique guns that my dad still owns. And I have, you know, a lot of um, processing to do around that and still don't know how I feel about it because there's so much of it in my heritage, in my culture, you know, even with um, providing food for ourselves and, and things like this. And then there's also so much of me that feels that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction and, you know, uh, really wants to live a life of nonviolence and doesn't understand where guns can fit into that. So, you know, it can become really easy to then just totally judge, you know, my parents or my culture where I grew up here in Cody, Wyoming for such an affinity and such a such ties to guns it's very much part of the lifestyle and that judgment i mean really right i'm just i'm judging part of myself that that's part of and part of my own heritage my own history my own cultural upbringing like honestly my own identity and unless so even tonight talking to my dad you know more about understanding it's like it wasn't long ago that I had relatives fighting in the Battle of San Jacinto. Like, and of course my grandfathers were in World War II. Like, I'm not saying that we don't continue to question all of these things and to bring things to life and to create a more peaceful world and all of, all of these things. It's just doing it with a little slash a lot of grace. And when we understand the larger perspective of what has led people to come to these beliefs that they hold and that they hold so dear and, and these lifestyles and these ways of life, then we are able to see them in the holiness that they are because I think when understood in its broadest context of people and countries and peoples, et cetera, the land even, you know, being able to tell their stories, then we can see that everything actually makes perfect sense. And we're able to sanctify it and we're able to give some grace. It doesn't mean that we totally agree with it. It just means that we're willing to sanctify it. We're willing to redeem it. We're willing to forgive it. And I don't think that happens. You know, there are probably a lot of different ways that it can happen. But for me, at least tonight, was an example of one way that we can have some more grace for ourselves, for our families, for our country, for the world, 
is by being willing to learn a little bit more about exactly what it is that got everyone where we are today. Whether it's looking more into our own story, more into that of our ancestors, etc. So I hope that you guys find this meaningful and I hope that this finds you, you know, bringing, bringing some grace, bringing a little grace by finding out a little bit more, being willing to be open to some more perspective, some larger truth from whatever person, situation, side, etc. it is that yes, it's important to bring out everything and bring it to light. And if you're feeling like the energy that you're feeling from that stuff that you're learning is one more of judgment, be willing to say, even just being willing to say, I'm willing to learn and open up to a little more here that will allow me to, to bring more grace rather than judgment to this situation. I mean, I hope that this feels as beautiful for you guys as it does for me tonight, because I know, man, do I know that with my family, I was needing a little grace. And honestly, tonight was one of the most beautiful, meaningful, intimate conversations I've ever had with my parents. And I know that being willing to directly communicate how I feel and then listen allowed me to have not just a little, a lot more grace. So I want to hear you guys' thoughts about grace. I hope that this video brings you some grace, you know, that's what I really hope. I'm sending you a lot of love. I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks for being here. It means a lot.